rebuild the morale and the culture in the organization to perform. We can't just ignore it because it's been hacked to be done that way. So we need to involve the stakeholders then to do the mop-up operation, if that's what we need. We need to equip change leaders at micro le at leadership. I have seen so many leadership development programs over the last 20, 30 years that I've been in this field. And we talk about lots of things, but we're not teaching people the neuroscience, the evidence about how brains change, about how people change behaviors. That's what we have to do. Um, we have to build certainty with very clear story, a very clear narrative. We have to take away the fear of uncertainty and putting people outside their safety zone. Uh, we have to um, address their survival buttons. You know, people don't resist change for the sake of it. Their questions are, what does it mean for me? Is my job safe? What do I have to learn? Will I still be able to take the same route to school? Um, what will it mean for my kids? What does it mean for my team? What does it mean for the plans I have for my own career? What about the future plans I have to move there? They're survival buttons. We need to think about them. We have to communicate tirelessly with a focus on the emotions of change. But almost all of the communications that I see come out from organizations are focused on the actual project, the, deli you know, the deliverables, the time frames, the, the, the imperatives for what has to be done. I see very few examples where people address this stuff first. We look at the history and the culture because if we've had past experiences, just like you said, Kevin, if we've had past experiences, we're immediately going to um, block out the thoughts. We make sure that all of our systems and our processes and our plans and everything else are congruent with the change that we're talking about. I mean, if we're saying we have, we're in one organization, we're going to build an organization of openness and transparency. One organization I worked with um, in uh, Australia, that was what they did. They built this massive new office block. Oh God, it was beautiful. The architects made a fortune. It was glorious, all these open spaces. And the CEO still had his own office with his door closed. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and, and, and the KPIs, by the way, were not reflective of being open and transparent. Their KPIs were still on individual performance when mm, the rationale for this new building was to communicate. Don't get it. Can you see how my brain, your brain, their brain's got to go, that doesn't make sense. And so we're going to resist it. And what we have to do is integrate this. Um, the neuroscience of, with all of this. So what do, how do I say that we can um, inform change leaders with neuroscience? I think that it starts with you. I call it the oxygen mask theory. If you don't know about yourself, and if you don't know about how you respond to change, how on earth do you have the right to lead anybody else? It's a provocative statement, but I'm a former lawyer. But I think it's true. And in fact, my work would tell me that absolutely. And the ROI on self-awareness, if anyone's interested, there's a huge new Corn Ferry report that's just out that quantifies the ROI in dollar terms on the power of self-aware leaders in their organizations. Um, we need to help change leaders understand how change occurs in the brain. We have to underscore the power of these things. We have to offer the evidence-based strategies so that their change strategies are coherent. They make sense. It's what I call the of course test. Um, they have to be congruent. Everything has to fit into that particular story. And every behavior has to be consistent. I mean, just as a final example of consistent, are you aware of uh, that story that emanated out of Britain a few weeks or a month or so ago of the Lord who was in charge of professional standards and ethics and integrity? Caught on video, snorting cocaine with prostitutes? Tell me how that fitted into any of this. You know, how could that, you can't, it, that. So, to me, when you finish changing, you're finished. That is the way the world is. The most important thing that we can do as change leaders is to assist others by, they'll come on board if they know where they're going and why, they'll feel included, and their emotions are acknowledged and addressed. 
And can you imagine a change world where that's happened? Could you imagine the change in statistics? It's interesting, even thinking about one of the world's greatest thinkers, Stephen Hawking, he says intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. And so, if you want to join me for some more information on this, I'm going to run a workshop on go and delve a little bit deeper into this this afternoon. The ants about how we actually get to effective change. I just hope you found that of some use to you.